As you've seen from the title of the video, today I'm going to be trying out Turtle Wax's brand new ceramic and graphene infused paste wax. Not only that, but I'm going to be putting it up against five other waxes from different price brackets to see how they compare. We're also going to be testing the water repellency and the chemical resilience. So this is all coming up right after the intro. So let's talk about what this wax is for a moment. This is the 75th anniversary edition. As you can see, I've also got the matching hat kindly provided by Turtle Wax here. So this is a blend of 10 different waxes and it has been infused with ceramic and graphene components to add intense gloss, slickness, durability, and UV protection. It comes in a, it looks like it's glass, but it's not, it's plastic. It comes in this jar, it is a total of 156 grams of wax. Uh, Price-wise, it's about 30 pounds. Honestly, it's a decent smelling wax. It's got a nice smell to it. That's what it looks like. It doesn't look incredibly appealing, being green and all. But yeah, it's a nice smelling wax. It'll be interesting to see how this goes on. So the waxes I'm going to be putting it up against are, like I said, in different price brackets. So let's talk about which ones I'm using. At the bottom of the price bracket here, 15 pounds for 250 milliliters of wax is Built Hamber's Double Speed Wax. This is a well-regarded wax for being very, very good with water behavior, very good beader, uh, very good abilities to rid water from the panel, but is also very, very good for durability. It's very chemically resistant. And for 15 pounds, it's an absolute bargain. The next wax is the first paste wax I ever bought. This is Colonite's 476S Double Coat Paste Wax. It's a really old school product. I don't really get much of a chance to try it these days. It has been a long time. It goes for about 20 pounds. It'll be very interesting to see how this compares to modern alternatives. Next up, at a price of anywhere from about 20 to 35 pounds, depending on where you buy it from, is G3 Pro Super Gloss Paste Wax. I've used this in a previous video. It is a very nice wax to use. It is, as they say, super gloss. It is a really good gloss enhancing wax. However, I know from experience that it's not super resilient to chemicals and it is more of a sheeter than a beater, but we'll see how it compares to the others. Moving up to the higher price bracket here, we have WoWo's Contact 121 Paste Wax. This goes for about 50 pounds, I believe, although I bought it in a sale, so you, there is a possibility you could get it for cheaper. But it, retail price is 50 pounds. The reason it's called Contact 121 is because of its very high contact angle for water beads. They really make a big deal about this being a very, very good beader. The question is, is it any good at fighting off chemical attack? That's yet to be seen. And coming in at the highest retail price of £55 is Autoglim's Ultra High Definition Wax. This is, you, you can find them a bit cheaper by the way if you do a bit of searching around. This is a special occasion wax. I really, really like this wax. It comes in its own display box. It has its own dual foam applicator and towel in the box. It really is a special wax for the money, I think it should be. However, having used it in the past, I do know that it's a really good wax to use and it's surprisingly resilient against chemicals. So it will be interesting to see how it performs compared to cheaper alternatives and even a similarly priced rival like the Wowos. Now, as far as testing is gonna be concerned, I'm gonna be using my test panel here, the Fiesta Bonnet. I'm gonna make sure that it has absolutely nothing on it. I'm gonna prep it with Turtle Wax's hybrid line here, the Pro One and Done compound. I'm gonna get this cleaned up. I'm gonna get it so there's nothing on there. I'm not going to prep the panel as far as pre-wax cleansers or polishes or anything at all. It's gonna be a pure abrasive to make sure there's absolutely nothing on the paint. I will go over it with a panel wipe to make sure nothing is left behind. So all of these waxes will be applied to pure, clean, bare paint, 
nothing else on it at all. So that nothing is getting any kind of an advantage. And I will try and use similar foam applicators where I can. In the case of the G3 Pro and the Auto Glim, they have their own applicators. So I'm going to use those. And for the rest, I will apply them all with similar types of applicators, very, very soft foam. So without further ado, let's get cracking. All right, so we're starting with the Colonite 476S double coat, mouthful of a name. Two twists on a soft wax applicator, overlapping circles, then vertical and horizontal lines to make sure good coverage is achieved. Built Hammer's double speed wax next, a carnauba and polymer based wax, so it's a hybrid. Couple of twists again, same idea. Both of these waxes very easy to apply, very straightforward. G3 Pro Super Gloss Paste Wax using G3's own waffle applicator. Not the biggest fan of this one to be perfectly honest, this applicator at least. I feel like the waffle just leaves a little bit of something untouched. So certainly overlapping is going to help. Here's the wax you've all come to see, the ceramic and graphene paste wax. It's a relatively firm wax, couple of twists, and it goes on a bit thinner than some of the others, or at least two of the others. Here's Wowo's Contact 121 wax. It is softer than I imagined. A couple of twists in there picked up a lot of wax. It didn't look like it though. Certainly very thick, but buttery smooth to apply. Cannot argue with any of that. And lastly, Autoglim's Ultra High Definition Wax. Applying this using their own applicator, a couple of twists. Very, very easy to apply, very buttery smooth, very straightforward and easy indeed. Let's have a look while they're curing. So this is the Colonite. It looks not too thick, not too thin. Pretty straightforward for a wax. It's hazing up nicely. There's the built hammer. It's a much thinner wax. It is a relatively hard wax in the tin. There's the oilier, greasier G3 Pro. Like I said, it is a glossy one. There's the turtle wax, looking fairly similar to the Colonite, actually. Moving up to the very thick and greasy Contact 121. And then finally, top left is the Auto Glim, looking similar to the Colonite. So, quick swipe test, the Colonite's ready to go. The Built Hammer, yep, that's ready to go. Turtle Wax, looking a bit greasy, but not bad. By the way, I'm using a different finger each time here, so there's no cross-contamination. There's the thick and greasy G3 Pro. Now, because I have short arms, I have to waddle my way around the other side of the bonnet here. There is the very thick and greasy Contact 121. Needs a bit more time to cure. The Auto Glim, that's ready to go. So the buffing off. This is the Colonite and it was super easy, super straightforward. Really couldn't argue with this one. Came off very cleanly, didn't leave anything behind, didn't require any amount of effort. Really, really nice. The built hammer was still relatively easy. It required a little more effort than the Colonite, but not much. Still came away nice and easily and left a nice finish. Flipping the towel to a clean side. By the way, this towel, I believe it is from Reaper Detailing. A very nice, soft, plush towel. There's the G3 Pro, you can see it is a thicker product, it is a greasier wax. I did remark to myself that realistically you should be using two towels to wipe that off. One to remove the excess product and another to buff it to a shine. Did need a little bit more effort and time. Now on to the turtle wax. Again, fairly straightforward this one. I did remark to myself it is a bit more grabby and sticky under the towel. It's not quite as slick as some of the others. But it was easy to remove. It didn't leave anything behind that it shouldn't have. It came off cleanly. Now this is where we ran into problems. 
flipping to another clean side on the towel and going for the contact one two one although forgetting where i'm going and nearly going to the auto glim this one required much more effort to remove it was sticky it was greasy it was oily there were bits caught in the tape it required much more effort to get a clean buff very very disappointing actually considering the price of this wax i did think that most of it was getting caught on the tape lines but it definitely required more buffing to make it look good and then over to the auto glim another clean side on the towel this was just fantastic as good as the colonite if not better very clean and easy to buff very straightforward no effort required no special skill honestly it was fantastic and left probably the slickest feel under the towel now here under my garage lights i after removing the tape and buffing clean the tape lines honestly i could not see any tape line i couldn't see any square that had wax applied to it i did think to myself that maybe all of this gloss and shine is purely down to my machine polishing it and nothing being added by the waxes however upon taking it outside after an hour i had a closer look and the lighting is different and i could see some of those tape lines it may be very difficult to pick up on the screen here it was very hard for me to see it on camera but coming in about two inches from that crease line on the left there is a bit of a tape line there so there was definitely something visible not super easy to spot but definitely something there anyway moving on to the water test we're going to start with a slow shower colonite on the bottom left built hammer on the bottom right performing practically the same Now the G3 Pro on the middle left, it is more of a sheeter, so it tends to flood and then sheet off. And the turtle wax, that just wants to get off the panel. It doesn't like flooding. Now up the top left is the contact 121. It definitely likes to get rid of that water. And the auto glim there likes to get rid of it even faster. Now let's flood them. So contact one to one on the left, auto glim on the right. The auto glim is faster at flooding that water off and just getting rid of it. In the middle, the G3 Pro on the left, you can see it is definitely flooding more. The turtle wax really wants to get rid of it. The bottom section, the colonite and the built hammer, very similar. The colonite is just being pipped by the built hammer. Let's go with fast water, you can see the difference here. Most of the sections want to rid their water fast and the G3 Pro just wants to hold on to it for a little bit longer. Now let's move on to the chemical test. I have in a spray bottle, Garage Therapy's Zero Decon Shampoo, diluted at 10 to one, and I have a very soft detailing brush here to work the product across each section. After the first hit, nothing noticeable behaving pretty much the way they're supposed to i'm also spraying them in a different order each time so as not to allow the products to have any kind of preferential treatment second rinse seeing a bit of a dent in the performance on the section where it had been sprayed up on the top left where the contact one to one is third rinse and there is definitely a dent going on there on the top left and the G3 Pro is being slowed ever so slightly also on the left side there's very little performance impact at all on any of those three starting to see more of a hit being taken by the Wowos there but the G3 Pro it's still working so let's give everything a really liberal spray with zero decon and I'm going to give everything an even fair go with this detail brush 
and let's give it another rinse to see what happens contact 121 at the top left it's basically dead I'm going to call that one out because G3 Pro is still repelling the water the colonite is taking a bit of a hit on the bottom left where the spray keeps hitting it but now we're ignoring the contact 121 it's out another rinse the G3 Pro is slowing even more still kicking there's still a bit of life in it but for this test it's dead and the colonite is definitely heading it off there I'll go for another hit another rinse colonite is still hanging on really well but in this situation I'm going to call the G3 Pro out and here we're going to look at maybe one final test to see if there's any difference between the final four and I would say that the Auto Glim is now starting to take a hit. The built hamber and the turtle wax are still kicking with no issues. They're absolutely brilliant. So you saw it yourself. The turtle wax is an incredibly impressive wax for its ease of application and removal. It was great. And its chemical resilience and water behavior are fabulous. Honestly, it was very, very close with this and the Auto Glim but the Auto Glim did start to tail off before the Turtle Wax. Both brilliant waxes. If you're looking for a luxurious wax, you're gonna get on great with this one. But honestly, for the money, if you're trying not to spend too much, I think 30 pounds, they've pretty much nailed it. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you do, please go ahead and smash that like button. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And while you're there, make sure you ring the notification bell so you don't miss my next video uploads. In the meantime, I've been Specky. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.